make uh, today a little less boring for you if you guys don't mind. Uh, I promise. Thank you, sir. I promise I'll leave at 8.30, okay? So I won't be here too long. If you have any rocks or eggs or bottles, please don't throw them at me. They do hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, I've given you a gospel track. If you have any questions, please email me later and I'll try to answer your questions. I'm going to preach a brief passage here out of the book of Jeremiah where the prophet Jeremiah is pleading to God because their, their nation and their people are suffering famines and pestilences and judgments by God, including water droughts. The Bible says even a drought could be a judgment by God. And it says right here in Jeremiah chapter 14, beginning with verse 19, Have you utterly rejected Judah? Has your soul loathed Zion? Why have you stricken us so that there is no healing for us? We looked for peace, but there was no good. And for the time of healing, and there was, there was trouble. We acknowledge, this is important, and I hope this is you. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers. For we have sinned against you. Do not abhor us for your name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of your glory, his glorious throne. Remember, do not break your covenant with us. Are there any among the idols of the nations that can cause rain? Or can heavens give showers? Are you not he, O Lord, our God? And therefore, we will wait for you, since you have made all of these. We will wait for you. The question is, are you trusting in and waiting for God? You know, in John 3.16, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believeth in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. That word believe in the Greek is the Greek word pistuo, which means to be entrusted to Christ to be entrusted to Jesus and committed to Christ because Jesus is his name and Christ is his title. Is that your belief system or is it only a mere intellectual belief? My friends, the gospel track that you have includes the law that we've all transgressed as law. As Jeremiah says, O Lord, we have sinned against you. Thou shalt not lie. And Jesus said, the liars will be cast into the lake of fire. My dear friends, that's me. A liar, according to God's word. Thou shalt not commit adultery. My dear friends, that's me too, an adulterer. Because Jesus said in Matthew 5, listen to this, folks. I tell you that if you've even looked at another woman with lust in your heart, you have committed adultery with her. Thou shalt not murder. I'm a murderer. Because the word of God, Jesus also said in Matthew 5, he rose the standard of that old law. He says, I tell you that if you've ever hated anybody without a just cause, you are a murderer in your heart. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Man, I've blown them all. I've blown all ten commandments. And even if you really truly believe you've only broken one, it says in James 2.10, that if you've only broken one of the commandments, you're guilty of them all. And therefore, according to verse 36 of John chapter 3, the wrath of God abides upon you. John chapter 3, verses 3 and 5, Jesus said twice, you must be born again. You must be born again of the water and the Holy Spirit. Verses 16 through 19, he says that if you're not truly a believer by being entrusted to Jesus as the Christ, if you're not truly born again, you're already under condemnation, my friends. But the good news is, my friends, God sent a remedy. And here's the good news. So that you will not have to endure the judgment and wrath of God. So that you will not have to endure God's eternal wrath and be placed under the wrath of a holy, just God in the place known as hell. And here is the good news. The remedy is that God came to us in the form of a man, conceived of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man, yet the second distinct person of the Trinity. Jesus Christ was conceived of the Holy Ghost, born of the virgin birth. Then 33 years later, baby Jesus went to that cross 
where He atoned for the sins of His church. Where Christ bore and fully appeased the wrath of God because it says in Isaiah 53 that it pleased the Father to crush His only Son because of the sins of His church. He bore the wrath of God on my behalf. Christ took my sins and gave me His righteousness. He'll do that for you too, perhaps if you become born again. And the Bible says that Jesus went to that grave and He died and He was buried. And on the third day, Christ God Almighty, God with skin on, Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, bodily rose from that grave so that you too perhaps will rise from your grave if you become saved. And it doesn't stop there, my friends. Because then Jesus ascended into heaven, the ascension of Christ. Christ ascended into heaven. We're today, November, September 12, 2018, at 0824 hours. Jesus Christ right now is seated at the right hand of the Father where He will intercede on behalf of you if you become saved. And where He intercedes on behalf of His entire church, the blood-bought, repented Bride of Christ. My dear friends, isn't that glorious news? Because it says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of your sin, the payments that you will receive just for one little sin, will be death, judgment, and hellfire. Amen. 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 But the gift of God is, is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you too born again? No. You're not? You, you need to be born again. All right. In agreement with this message. She says, amen. She's in agreement, but says that she's not born again. My lady, I love you. The Bible says that if you repent and believe, sir, you too, that if you put your trust in Christ, Jesus said, the Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. And what that means in the Greek is not just call upon Him. It means to declare Christ as your Lord and your King. It's a declaration of dependence, to be independent from your sin and dependent upon Jesus Christ as your Lord. Do that and respond to that gospel call. Jesus said in Mark 1.15, Repent and believe in the gospel. My dear friends, repentance is not a works that saves you, but there is no salvation without repentance because repentance is because of salvation. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, I tell you that unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. My friends, repent before it's too late. Come to Christ on His terms. The Jesus of the Bible, not this watered-down genie in a bottle that's going to give you your best life now that's taught in these churches out here, but the true God of the Bible, the creator of the creation and the giver of the gifts. The God, the same God that is infinite in love, is also infinite in justice and wrath. My dear friends, repent, otherwise you will perish. Be entrusted to Christ for salvation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do videotape my encounters, and if you ask me to mute the video, I will. But if you have any questions, I will respond to you, and I will answer your questions if I can. I will pray for you if you ask me to pray for you. Death is coming. Every 24 hours, 165,000 people die in this world. And that does not include abortion nor suicide. Some of you are in this line because of an unfortunate death in your family. That's what they do. They, they, they give death benefits. My dear friends, you might be next. God bless you, and we love you too. Yes, you sir. have a good day, and it takes a lot to do this, and yes, God sir. bless you. Yes, sir. And that's God's name. All right, Hallelujah. my friend. All right, can I pray for you? Go ahead. We pray for us. You know, I'll um, pray for your mom too? No, that's my fiance. I'm sorry. Well, let me see. Lower those glasses, your fiance. Excuse me. 
Take your glasses off, baby. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, she's your age. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, actually, she's 41, and I'm 21. But okay, then married. I wasn't off then. <laughs> Whoo, you saved me there. You saved me. Oh, but she looks oh that. Good for her age. All right, you saved me from getting in a lot of trouble but there, we're huh? We're going to get married. But You're going to yeah. get married? Yep, we sure are. All right, okay. Um, uh, now, both of you say, uh, if you guys want to step away where we can talk privately, it's up to you, or we can do this here. Um, but um, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, she's in agreement with this message, and she, she says that neither one of you are born again. Uh, here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do what, what unbiblical churches will do. I'm not going to ask you to accept Jesus into your life, mm -hmm. because that's not in the scriptures. I'm not going to ask you to bow your head and raise your hand and close your eyes and then declare you born again like a Protestant pope, because that's not in the scriptures. I'm not going to make you make a decision for Christ because that's not in the scriptures. But what Jesus does say is repent and be entrusted to Christ for salvation. He said, pick up thy cross and follow me daily. That's salvific. When you, when you are truly radically changed, then God will save you. It says in Ephesians 2 that we're saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, not of our works, lest any man should boast. My dear friends, if you truly are, are believing by entrusting yourselves to Christ for the first time for salvation, then you are saved right now if that's the case, all right? I'm not gonna tell you that you are born again because I, I'm, I'm not God, I can't tell you for sure, but it looks like this is a true, genuine repentance and faith, mm -hmm. and I wanna praise God, all right? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, what is your names? Josh, Josh and Christina. Oh Lord, we thank you for Josh and Christina, Lord God. Lord, we know that they are children of God, or excuse me, that they were born in the image of God, that they were image bearers of Christ, but they do not become a child of God unless they're born twice, born again. Lord, Josh and Christina profess to know you, profess now to have come to a saving knowledge of you. They profess with their lips that they now are trusting in Christ for salvation for the first time, Lord God. Lord, only you know if that's a genuine salvation or not. Only you know if that's genuine faith and genuine repentance. I pray, God, that you would grant them repentance, draw them both closer to you. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them a solid, healthy, biblical church that will disciple them in you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they would flee from sin and flee to you, Christ, for salvation and flee to you, Christ, for sanctification, to be set apart, to be holy, to live a life of godliness, Lord. Lord, if it's your will that these two be married, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless that marriage, Lord God, that, that a marriage is beautiful because you've described your saved church as your bride and you are the bridegroom. That's how important a marriage is. So we pray in the name of Jesus, you will do that in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You yeah, guys need God. to find a solid church. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, it's a bit of a drive. The one I attend, I don't normally invite people to church because I want to invite people to Christ. Right. Church is just a building where the church goes, right? Right. But, I, but my wife and I do attend a church up. Sounds like that bad. Pretty and nice uh, and if you guys want to email me, I'll give you the information of okay. that church, and um, and I'll, I'll get you plugged into a church okay. right away. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, and. Let me ask you, for the edification of the church, to glorify the Father, to, glor to exalt Christ, and to, and to encourage other Christians out there on YouTube, do you mind if I include this conversation in the YouTube? No. It's okay? Mm -hmm. All right, praise God, I will do that. Hallelujah. Um, all right, and you guys need to get planted in the church. I'm telling you, it would, be, it would be derelict of my duties and theological malpractice for me to walk away from here without giving you an opportunity to be discipled in the Lord. That is extremely important. You guys do weddings at the church? I'm sorry? You guys do weddings at the church? Oh, absolutely. Uh, but but I can't guarantee. I do weddings as too as well. But our pastor, if you were to get married through our church, our pastor would have to do that. But to be honest with you, he would also have to biblically counsel you and, and, and ask you some personal questions. And I'm not going to ask on camera. That's fine. Um, well, obviously, questions. questions, for instance, there are some people that, that, a, that a good pastor won't remarry if they're if they're previ if they had a previous marriage that was unbiblically divorced. Most pastors wouldn't marry some people under so let me just say this you don't need to answer yes or no but if uh if if uh if you left your wife um because she's prettier than your wife that would be an ungodly divorce and no but no pastor should marry you to her because you you were wrong for leaving your wife so scenarios like that mm. um so it would be wrong to remarry you guys um but uh, only only the the pastor of the church would do that well, um I'm, i've never got married I'm, it's gonna be my first marriage yeah, but... yeah you don't need to answer those questions okay it's none of my business because ma married, because though. divorce is very complex and each divorce and remarriage has to be judged on its own merit and on an individual basis. 
but um, uh, yeah, that if it's if it's uh, if it's if it's a biblical re remarriage, uh, our pastor would do it, and uh, and there's always grace in particular mm -hmm. areas. So, okay, but I just can't say yes, he would. Um, mm -hmm. I also do them as well, um, but uh, I want you guys to send me an email, yeah. and yeah. Um, and we'll get you guys plugged in, okay? okay. And, and and oh, by the way, there's another church right here on East Street that's. Um, uh, 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 fairly solid too. It's uh, if you go all the way down East Street, just be right at right there where a hospitality lane is. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the right side. It's right next to a sports bar of all a pool hall sports bar, East Street on the right mm -hmm. side, right at hospitality okay. lane. Yeah. You look to you the right. Twenty four hour fitness kind of over there in that area. Yeah, there's a little SW Plastics. Well, there's a little um, little Christ Redeemer Redeeming Church. I have to leave. Um, yeah. You have a good day. They, they want good. me to leave at 8.30. God, okay. God, bless God bless you guys, okay? You Praise the day. Lord. You guys stay in touch. I want to get you guys in church, okay? But there's a good church here in San Bernardino for you as well. Praise right. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him Morning. all creatures Morning. here below. Good morning. How are you? Praise Him above ye heavenly Good morning, sir. It's good news for you, my friend. Good morning. Praise Father, you, you Son, and Holy Ghost. Good morning, sir. God bless you. Good news for you, my friend. You take care, buddy. 